Thank you. You know, um, to, to break us straight um, in terms of a lot of the things that, you know, you've, you've been a part of, you know, uh, you know, just in the community in general. So I think it's very important. So thank you. And thank you for everybody uh, that's joined us uh, so far also. I appreciate everyone. So yes, uh, yeah, let's, let's get right into it. And like I say, uh, I think 45 minutes this thing, it does. Yeah, you see my shirt? I'm representing. You know, I love that. Diaries, <laughs> <laughs> uh, they part of this organization. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I've, I've rocked this. I need to get some more, in fact, because, uh, you know, we have to support, we have to support ourselves, support our businesses, and uh, it's so important. Yeah, shout out to yeah, diplomacy. You know, so let's get in. If you get caught up later, uh, we can definitely just, I'll connect back live, and then we now, you know, we start it all over again. So, yeah, so please uh, let's get into your background. Uh, in terms of yourself coming, you know, like a lot of us that came from Nigeria. So if you can get into that already, you growing up back home and then your education, your formal education over there, then coming to the U.S. Thank you. Yeah. So thanks for the opportunity. Uh, first of all, it's Memorial Day in the U.S. And uh, I'd like to recognize the veterans and all those who have come before for us and sacrificed their lives for us. And, and that's why I remember them on Memorial Day. Um, we do this every year, but there are people that went ahead of us and uh, they make the opportunities for us to be here today. Okay. And I also like to recognize the challenges that we're currently having with COVID-19 and uh, we've lost some friends, some close friends. Um, Jonathan Adeo, me, our big brother in New York. Yeah. It still, still hurts me, but I know he's somewhere looking down and smiling on all of us and let us know that the journey begins with all of us. So let's, let's keep all the victims um, in our prayers and their families and their friends. And, you know, we pray we come out of this globally. So um, I'd like to start by just giving you a little bit of a background. Uh, I was born about 50 years ago. Uh, <laughs> my parents, um, Dr. Kola Adena and Mrs. Leota Adena, um, they, my, my mom's from the Caribbeans. Uh, they met and uh, moved to, moved back to Nigeria. They met when my dad was in England, and they got married there and moved back to Nigeria. And I was born in 1969. And, um, you know, they lived in Nigeria for some years, and we moved back to England, where I had my early years in elementary school. And then my dad, you know, like most Nigerians during that era, um, they looked forward to going home. And they went back home, and... Uh, you know, moved back, back to Nigeria in the 70s. Hmm. Uh, I grew up in Lagos. We, we moved back to Lagos. Grew up in Lagos, went to primary school there. And after that, uh, like most around that era, um, as you know, uh, growing up in Nigeria, our parents knew that a good education was prime well, to giving us a good foundation to move forward in life. Yeah. So uh, I had the opportunity, and uh, during that era, I went to Federal Government College, Iloring, in Kwara State. And that was a, a, a molding experience for me because it gave us some structure. Yeah. Um, if, if you went to boarding school, if you knew anything about boarding school, I mean, you were put on a schedule from when you woke up in the morning mm. to when you went at night. And your schedule really, really uh, included not just your classes, but you had chores you did daily and um, you had activities. Uh, whether you liked it or not, you had sports, um, you had to sleep. You know, it really gave me a lot of structure during those formidable years of my life. And uh, along the way, I made a lot of good friends, uh, relationships. So that, those, were, those were things that really grounded me uh, growing up. Um, upon finishing at Fairgoming College of Learning, yes, uh, I went to, and the system was a little different then. Uh, I went to Lower Six at St. Gregory's, and, and I did one year there. And from St. Gregory's, I went to Unilag, University of Lagos. Okay. And um, uh, University of Lagos, uh, I, did, I did a year there. And during that era, uh, it was during the military, during the military rule. And I do believe it was uh, Babangida or um, Abacha, Abacha actually. It was Abacha that was ruling at that time. Okay. And um, my parents, as usual, you know, our parents are a big part of us. Uh, my dad 
and and just to go a little bit back, my dad came from a family that, um, you know, he didn't come from a rich home, but he knew the value of education. And, he, you know, he tells us the stories, just like most of our parents would tell us how they walked to school, they walked kilometers to school, how after school they went to the farm. Um, my dad, you know, where, I'm from Ikerekiti, so he grew up in uh, then Ondo State. And, you know, he had an opportunity to have an education based on all his hard work. And uh, based on that, my dad knew at an early age that the best thing he can give his kids is a good education. Sure. And uh, he made sure that was, that was realized in, uh, in, in, in my life and my siblings' lives. So um, at the time when we're having, um, this was back in 87, 88, uh, we were going through military rule. And the university was being closed down quite a bit. So we weren't really getting any studying done. So my dad made the uh, investment and uh, said I had to go overseas like uh, a few parents back then. So I got the opportunity to move to the U.S. in 88 because, um, uh, again, you know, thanks to my dad and my, and my mom, they knew that a good education was, was prime. Of course. So, what, what, were, uh, what was their background, like in terms of work, business work? Uh, my, my, my dad, my dad is an orthopedic surgeon. Um, he studied um, in Russia, um, did his housemanship and practice in the UK uh, and a few courses um, um, in the US. And then uh, moving back to Nigeria, when we moved back, he was working for Shell Petroleum. So he, he, he did very well and had his own practice. And then my mom, uh, her background, she actually, which was interesting when she met my, mom, my dad, um, was a, was a nurse. And when she went back to Nigeria, she got into the uh, airline industry and she was in sales and eventually became a sales manager uh, in, for Southern Nigeria. So they, they had um, pretty good careers and they were good examples for me to look at. I know that. That's the reason I, can, I question. I think. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. No, we, we kind of fought like Jay-Z said in one of his lyrics it's like listen if i was a still a drug dealer my cousins my nephews they want to do the same thing but now yeah they want to be rappers just like him and it's like you know that influence you know from an early stage uh, with parents or just mentors around us you know it's just it's crucial sometimes to to development of the children and, and the people that is uh, that's around yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. fine. Then, um, so what were you, a, a Unilag or in Nigeria? You did you studied physics, is that? Correct? Yeah, yeah. I was in the physics department, and uh, all right. Um, yeah. I wanted to be like, why physics? Is well, I mean, I knew I was going to get into engineering, um, but Nigeria then was a little different. We didn't have as many universities, and uh, what eventually happened was you got into university for a major, and eventually. You, you did that and try to transfer over. Shout out so, to the with us, man. The king of IG. <laughs> Shout out right. To Thanks, bro. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then coming coming to the states, right? Uh, you you eventually you you know you started studying over again, right? Can you tell us about that? Like, you know, what were the you know the universities that you went to? Uh, the reason why you chose your field specifically. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've always been interested and intrigued with the engineering field. And, and that's why I went into computer electrical engineering. And um, maybe I had foresight. I, I looked ahead to say this was an area that was going to grow. So I went to the University of Akron, which had uh, in Ohio, which had a pretty good um, program. And, and my dad knew me. He said, hey, you're coming to study. So he limited my options in terms of the cities I would go to. So New York wasn't one of them <laughs> uh, <laughs> because he knew there were a lot of distractions there. Yeah. But um, we, we picked Akron, Ohio, uh, University of Akron. Uh, you if you're familiar with Akron, that's where... Um, from Brooklyn. Sorry. <laughs> what do you say? You want to keep it away from Brooklyn, right? <laughs> keep it away from Brooklyn. So I went to the University of Akron. Uh, that's uh, home of LeBron James. That's what most people know. Uh, no Akron as. Um, so I went there, uh, studied for six years. Uh, while I was in Akron, even though I had uh, my studies, I, also, I saw that there was a gap in uh, promoting 
African and Nigerian culture. Uh, the people in my class and in the community only knew so much about us. Um, maybe as far as Tarzan, if, if you look at it, or National Geographic. And, uh, you know, even though I was here to study, it was, I felt it was my duty, just like a lot of us did, yeah. to educate them. So I was very involved in the international uh, community. I was president of the International Students Club. I was also one of the founders of the African Students Union and also very active and eventually became president. Yeah. And, uh, Is there any other like main events that you are aware of at that time that was going on in, in this? Uh, then no, not at that time. I mean, <laughs> the African community was very little. They weren't, there weren't a lot of us here. Um, although when you went to Houston or, or New York, you'd find a much larger community. But at the time, uh, it wasn't as many people. Okay. So obviously, you're, you're studying and the president of you know, the African Student Union, you saw an opportunity. So let's talk about the, um, the inception of the Nigerian reunion, which is, which is why that's how it was, you know, got to know you. Um, you know, starting. So let's talk about that. Um, how you started that, uh, the reason why you started exactly, and you already started talking about that roughly. So let's get into that. Yeah. Well, I, I won't take all the credit, but I'll give you a brief story, uh, what the storyline was. So uh, upon graduation, I moved to Detroit, Michigan. And while I was in Michigan, a close friend of mine, Kari Masha, uh, he, um, you know, we used, to, we used to hang out together, and he had a few friends that uh, were trying to get a QC, KC reunion going. And before you know it, they got other um, interests and other people went to uh, colleges. Uh, well, we call them high, uh, secondary school or high school back home. Okay. Um, so a lot of alumni had an interest. So we all gathered in 97 in Atlanta, Georgia. And, you know, while I was there, I saw the interest and I helped around and I actually volunteered. And then the next year, um, a group took it forward and went to Washington, D.C. And I was part of the team just supporting the organization. And I saw the program, where the program could go, and I said, well, why don't we take this to the next level? So, um, you know, just like every other group, we had some challenges. And within the group, they said, hey, uh, Chevy, you're the cool-headed one. How can you, could you, you know, take on this, the charge and lead the organization uh, in moving forward? So in 99, we, we formalized the platform, uh, came out with the name, the Nigerian Reunion. Um, then it was called the Nigerian Reunion Committees, okay. which we eventually went on to change it to corporation. And at the time, we were thinking, you know, this is the great platform to promote, promote Nigerian culture. And I remember back then, um, what was so prominent about the event that we did in Detroit, uh, Detroit had never seen that many Nigerians uh, young Nigerians in one place before. So we did it downtown, uh, a place called the Ren Ren Renaissance Center right now. Uh, can't remember what the name of the hotel was back then. And we also did um, did part of the event at Bell Isle. And we did everything within approximately a five-minute drive. And people came from, you know, different countries all over the world. And we had two prominent guests. One was uh, back then, um, African Afrobeats wasn't really hot then. I mean, there was no Afrobeats. Uh, but we had um, we had um, uh, Ugo, UGO. Oh, yeah. uh, remember him? Yeah, we we had him. Uh, we also had uh, a Nigerian, uh, Doctor Linus Obuji, who was our keynote speaker, and he worked for NASA. And what we felt was on July fourth, we felt it was important to bring people together socially, but also to um, highlight people that were doing prominent things in, in the community at large and making a big contribution to the United States. And, and that's why we kind of brought not just um, the social aspect of what was going on, yes. but also uh, demonstrating the impact we're making. So that's, that's when the Nigerian Reunion was really born uh, in Detroit. I mean, it was a, was a good event. I mean, a lot of people showed up. Uh, and uh, from then, we, we, started, we started the movement. At what point was it that, um, in terms of when the movement started, what point was it that you re you realized that wow, this is this is bigger than me. This is him. What well, you know, it, it it grew every year, and um, 
you know, it, you know, the beauty about it was, you know, and I just, I always, I'm always careful because I want to give credit yeah. to all the other folks that were involved. I mean, we had a, a team of people that really came together, even though um, I, I led the charge, but we had a team of people who, who took on responsibility. I think what, we had a core group of five and then grew up, grew a little bit. Um, I, I think the biggest moment was actually in 2000 when we took it to Houston, Texas. And uh, Houston, we had one of our largest crowds ever. We had about 6,000 people um, at the Astrodome. And you're talking Nigerians. Uh, we had the, the Nigerian consulate of Atlanta, then Joe Keshi, he, he was our, one of our special guests. And then the first African and Nigerian born mayor, um, um, Emmanuel Nonworth, mayor of East Cleveland was also a guest. So uh, that's when we knew it was huge. That's when we knew that there was a lot of attention and need for, for Africans and first, second, third generation sharing the culture. Yeah. Um, so it was, a, it, was a, it was a big win for us. And we said, we have to do this consistently. So we kept on doing this every July 4th, every July 4th. And, you know, over the years, it just was amazing. Um, what, what was the, some of the, like, I think when I go back and, some of the things that I loved the most about the reunion was the fact that it was in different city. So you know, now, none of us did anything that we can just know. Oh, yeah. This weekend is reunion. We're going looking forward to the city. Uh, what was it that made the team realize that you know what we got to do this in different cities? Because you could have easily just kept it in one location. And and you're right. I mean, one I think one thing that motivated us was the opportunity to see a different city. And, and see see America at the same time on, on July 4th. And then uh, by, by taking it on the road, it gave us the opportunity to uh, connect with other Nigerian Americans um, and Americans at large. So it gave us an opportunity to see America and at the same time to bring, pe bring the, our attendees along to see America because our attendees came from all over the world. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Another thing, you talked about it a little bit earlier, right there. At the earliest stages, it wasn't Afrobeat. We didn't even really, Afrobeat, we didn't coin the term Afrobeat there, right? No, no we, we didn't. Damn, so music from Nigeria or music from Ghana or whatever the case is, right? You know, um, so you talked about working with the likes of Ugo earlier on. Um, how did you go about connecting everything? Because remember, at that time, I don't think there was Facebook. Instagram, no. right? So let, let me, the market, right? The thing, you know, the end operation was able to mobilize everybody together. Yeah. So uh, if I remember clearly, back then we had um, um, uh, chat, chat rooms. No, it wasn't, well, chat rooms were there, but we had these boards. Um, I can't remember what they call these boards. Um, like I five, we didn't have these online boards that we that people used to join. Okay, and I don't remember the terminology. It's just it skips me. It's been so long, and um, we also used an email. We had an email list okay. where we blasted, and, and a lot of it was by word of mouth. I mean, no one was doing what we were doing. Um, nobody. I mean, no. I mean, it, we're talking. We're talking um, late nineties, early early two thousands. No one was doing what we're doing. So. Um, we were promoting the culture. We were bringing, um, we brought Lagbaja's 15-man band. We did that in New Jersey. That was just uh, phenomenal. I mean, the turnout, um, Style Plus, uh, um, we, we had groups way back. Um, so, so there was, there was a, a, a yearning for, for that. Um, we went even as far as in, in 2000, and I remember went to Vegas, um, I think Vegas was 06 or so and Six. went to Vegas <laughs> and we took we took the uh, speaker of the house then, Dimeji Bankole. Uh, <laughs> he came and did a town hall meeting with him and, and that was at the highest levels in the Nigerian government. Uh, we, you know, Dele Mamadou, uh, Bob D, uh, Chief Dele Mamadou came on board in 2002 and became a, a huge supporter of us and actually I think that's what really opened the floodgates for us because what he was doing was pretty unique. Um, he was promoting African culture, the positive, and of course, we saw some of the affluent. And his magazine, Ovation, 
was something that everybody looked at. So by the time he showcased uh, a few reunions, um, that gave us a huge exposure in the Nigerian and African community. So that was very powerful. That, that, that really opened up the doors for us. Yeah. And also, I, I think um, the reunion, something that, that I think the NRC did that was fantastic was the fact, like you said, it wasn't just come together, let's party, music, there's artists. There were forums, right? There yes. were forums. Sometimes I remember there were like uh, investment forums. Let's go back to Nigeria forum. Like, what do you do when you get there? Uh, networking forum, just to do different things. How important was it to have uh, those type of functions, even at the earlier stage of the NRC? Uh, day? Well, it was vital because um, we wanted, a lot of us yearned to move back. Those of us that migrated here wanted to move back and wanted to look at opportunities. Uh, one year we had the Nigerian Stock Exchange come out and showcase themselves to the diaspora. That was in, in Atlanta in 2006. And, uh, you, you know, it was... Um, as Nigeria was opening up and becoming more of a democracy, uh, people were seeing that shift and it was an opportunity for people to see and place themselves. And I do believe the the um, stock exchange did get an opportunity to showcase themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and there were some people that made investments. Um, and then they connected our platform with that too, which showed that we um, not only had the entertainment aspect, but we also had the the conversational piece um we also we also were very instrumental in promoting nollywood um i believe at that reunion we had genevieve yes uh that, that reunion you know she came and oh, yeah yeah, yeah. so it, we did a variety of things because we felt it was important that if we're going to live in america we have to promote our culture oh. and the finer things so people don't they don't look back and talk about you know you guys are not developed in africa or what, what resources do you need? It was very vital for us to, to do those things. Mm -hmm. And then let's talk about it a little bit before I move on. Let's talk about just how challenging was back then to, to discuss like sponsorship uh, with people. Oh, wow. It, it, was, it was hard. It was hard. It was hard work because, um, you know, as I know, uh, sponsorship in our community then was, was difficult because um people really wanted to make sure you reached reach their market and um when you were dealing with companies based here in the u.s it was very hard because you didn't have the data hmm. but as time went on we got more support but really as a community um we weren't really consolidated so we we we, we had to work hard for sponsorship uh we got most of our sponsorship from nigeria because um the diaspora thing was new. A lot of companies wanted to reach out to the diaspora hmm. and they were looking for the right platform to do it. So we, we got some good support, XDS uh, Credit Union. Um, we had Western Union, which was a big one. Yeah. At some point, I think we had Nigeria Airways when Nigeria Airways was flying. And, uh, <laughs> and then we had, we, we had a, another, a number of banks. We had a number of banks yeah. that were. Uh, our wife, man, she's online, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, yes. Thank you so much. And then, okay, perfect. Like, you know, in terms of just the headache, putting the event, sometimes that tells and stuff. Were there any point when the team came together and said, you know what, guys, this is this is too much. It's out of control. Like, we need to just, it's destroying the image of, I mean, any anything like that happened that almost push you the edge? Um, well, you know, I mean, the, the truth of the matter is just like any business, we, we had financial challenges and every year came around and we'll say, we're not doing this next year. The financial challenge mm -hmm. uh, was there, but we, we saw the need for the platform and every year we came around, we would wait till the end of the year after we we're burnt out from the previous event. And then the next year, um, we're like, we have to do this again. And, and it was meeting people like yourself and, yeah. and big moves and a number of people that um, we met along the journey that, you know, the, you, you guys will call us up and say, hey, is this happening again? Is it happening next year? And and then we get back on and we'll be like, oh, no, we don't want to do this. But but we did. Yeah. Um, you know, what was also special for me is that's how I met my wife. And I tell people every day, 
I when I started out and I joked. I think I remember one meeting. I said, "Hey, uh, I'm doing this reunion not just for promoting our culture, but this is how I'm going to meet my wife." And uh, it was a self prophecy, and, and mm. it happened. You know, it happened. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. That was my next question, right? I've yeah. People, I can call Moose right now. I will tell you so many people he's met. People that met each other that say, "Oh, we met at the NRC and then they they went ahead and got married. They've got kids now, etc." You know, I mean, the uh, this event it, it created artists. It gave life, you know, to promoters, uh, DJ. Yeah. It made them popular and and did so much uh, for the community. Uh, what is your takeaway uh, in terms of the NRC as a whole? If somebody say, you know what? Let's talk about NRC as one of the founding uh, uh, legacy for us in the United States as diaspora. So what would be a takeaway for you to say, okay, th this was it? Well, I mean, <clears throat> it was defining because when you look at that platform, um, I just think back to all the people who have come as guests or, or participated. And when you look at where some of them are now, um, I know they, they, they define their, their own careers and, um, you know, they met other people and they met people on the platforms, but it was a conduit for them to connect with people of, of similar culture, or in some cases, people married, uh, got to know more of the Nigerian culture, and that's why they got involved with, with Nigerians. But we always have to, as a community, um, represent who we are. Um, you, you, you look at other cultures where sometimes um, people change their names just because, so that you're accepting or you can recognize who they are. But that's not what we should do as a people. We, we need to be proud of our names and teach other people how to pronounce our names and share our culture. And as we pass on um, knowledge and information to the next generation, yes. we ask our kids to do the same. So, so you, you know, walking away from the... Re from the reunion, and I, I tell people, even though we did 19 years of it, and that, that time is coming when we will pick it up again, but we, we, it was important that we promoted who we are as a people. And also, it was now easier for us to engage other people from other cultures, because now they saw who we, we were. So it was very, very prominent, yeah. Shout out to Lex. <laughs> Lex is oh, Lex on line. <laughs> Yes, thank you, thanks, thank you. Uh, okay, I guess that was a question somebody asked me. Cause please, you ask Kagan, are we gonna have the reunion again? You know, it's coming, it's coming. To be even, it, it, it's 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 coming, but it might come in a different form. Different. Um, you know, a lot of things have changed for all of us. We've grown up, okay. and uh, the reunion's mindset is still the same: connecting people. Yeah. But we also have to connect within the communities we live in, because I think that's very vital. So let, let's talk about it, because as you were doing this, uh, you were doing so many other stuff in terms of studies, education, working, and uh, you know some of the stuff you did, you, you taught IT and project management for 14 years at the University of Phoenix and Wayne Community College. And, uh, can, you, can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, so just like every every Nigerian, you you, you have a a yearning and a hustle, um, so just to not just uh, from a career perspective. You know, I was working in the IT field at the time, and uh, also had a small part time business uh, at night, uh, working on computers, supporting small businesses. And um, upon getting my master's degree, I I challenged myself because um, just like every Nigerian, you want to learn. And I found an opportunity to teach at Wayne County's Community College District in, in Detroit. And it was such a great opportunity because I started teaching computer courses, uh, primarily in the non-traditional class environment. And that's, that was during a downturn in the economy. So I got to teach mature um, adults um, who didn't have computer skills um, on how to retool themselves and be uh, instrumental in, in in the society and looking for career chair change. So that was my first uh, gig on teaching. And I didn't realize I was good at it. I even made, made, had, had a few clients from teaching. And that led me on to understand that um, 
taking that real world experience into the classroom was just such a value that I went on and uh, got into more of the traditional uh, uh, coursework and then eventually also taught at University of Phoenix. So it was rewarding because not only were you sharing your knowledge, but bringing that world experience into the classroom was just phenomenal. Absolutely. Yeah, thank, thanks for sharing lights on that. Also, you, uh, you've worked for like other companies from IT, to yeah. also, you know, uh, from an IT standpoint. And then also you, um, you did uh, the, mas the, the master's program, you did uh, project management, uh, yeah. education. Um, why was it important uh, for you to do the project management certification? And how did that um, excel your career generally? Well, that was huge. So, so in IT, I, I, I did a number of roles, um, some more technical uh, throughout my career. Uh, I did a lot of business analysis and requirements uh, and also specialized in databases. Um, that was an area that I, uh, when I, upon graduation from my undergrad, that was an area I was very strong in. Um, but as I developed, I, I realized that there were other opportunities and uh, I looked at in project management, not only from a, um, a salary perspective, but also from an experience perspective, you got to see more of the organization and how you can impact um, helping the organization reach its mission. And I've always been a problem solver, you know, sit down, I look at a situation, uh, I want to understand how it works and how we can be successful at reaching those objectives. So uh, in, 04, in 06, I uh, got certified and that immediately gave me an opportunity to uh, consult for Hewlett Packard. Uh, consulting at Journal Motors in Detroit. Um, and that was uh, a, a very um, good experience um, working in the auto industry at the time. Uh, it was reaching its peak and right before the economy dropped, uh, I had uh, good, six, six good years uh, working at GM as a consultant at the time. Okay. Um, then I went into the financial industry for a couple of years, but then again, GM was doing a huge turnaround Okay. And one of the things Jim was doing, and this was after the, um, this was when they, they had filed bankruptcy and they were turning the company around. Uh, one of the big things they did was they were bringing high tech jobs back to the US and they were going to create opportunities for college students and they created four innovation centers. So an opportunity showed up at GM and I, I, I signed back in GM and um, one of the roles I played was a, a global lead on uh, deploying uh, virtual environments globally to all the call centers uh, for OnStar. So it, 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 the pro project, program manage, project management certification opened a lot of doors for me in IT. Okay, thanks. So uh, one, one question that I have for you also is about, um, obviously being somebody that's highly qualified, educated, different experiences, global experience, right? Also, uh, a, a lot of us, many like you also in the United States, with part of the brain drain, right? Um, what is your opinion on the brain drain itself? And how do you think we can do things that is, that is helping our, our people back in Africa also? Okay. Well, I mean, the, the brain drain has been around for a long time. Uh, one of the efforts that um, then President Olusegun Obasanjo did was he formed the Nigerian in the diaspora organization, NIDO, um, which uh, the platform's focus was for us to uh, identify professionals here in the U.S. and other countries in the diaspora to be resources back home in Nigeria. And, uh, you know, it was um, a, a platform that did reach out to professionals, but it wasn't funded. It wasn't heavily funded. And I think just like any other platform, it, it had its challenges, but it did, tr it did try to accomplish some of that. Uh, I was also on the board for four years okay. uh, with the organization. And, and the, the biggest challenge is just identifying where these professionals are. Uh, the organization is a little different today. Um, they, have state, they have state chapters in different states and they continue to do the outreach to Nigerians uh, to, to give back. But there are other organizations, uh, AMPA, um, Nigerian nurses, pharmacists. There's a new Nigerian US IT organization. There are other organizations that 
are uh, filling that void and taking that expertise back to Nigeria yeah. at the same time. So we're, you know, it, there, there are a lot of efforts out there, you know, and in trying to, to fill that gap. Yeah. Do you think like the, um, the Nigerian government should be more involved in working with like private organizations and sector in terms of helping the diasporans to help out more on ground? Maybe it doesn't even mean like you have to be there physically or give money. Maybe like doing some courses like virtually, like now we've learned during this pandemic. Um, oh, share knowledge and share information and stuff. Yeah. What so there, there's a platform called NIDCOM uh, in Nigeria now, the Nigerian Diaspora Commission, okay. which is um, uh, headed by uh, Abike Dabiri, who's, who used to be a, a House of Rep and Special Advisor to the President, who I've worked with also throughout the reunions mm -hmm. and uh, also through NIDO. So they're an official government entity now that is there to drive and help guide the Nigerian diaspora to help um, facilitate whether, you know, through their professions or anything they want to do in terms of opening up a business. That platform there is now up there to partner, just like other countries like India has a similar organization um, to help get more diasporans contributed back, back home. Cool. So uh, tell us what um, the county school board member district does and uh, your reason for running for this position. Okay. So uh, fast forward, uh, I moved to Atlanta, Georgia, um, six years ago. Okay. And one of the uh, key things was for me to make sure my kids went got a great education, just like my parents gave me a good uh, opportunity and education and started life. And my wife and I um, looked at schools and uh, we looked at Gwinnett County. Uh, we had friends that had recently moved also to Gwinnett County. And uh, we made a commitment to move here because we like the school system. Um, it's just like any public school system, even though we have great programs, uh, you also have challenges in the school system, everywhere from uh, teacher retention um, to um, uh, challenges with biases with kids in school and, and just the resources in general, just depending on where you lived in the county. So uh, as my kids went to school, of course, we, we, we always support them and try and give them the best resources. Uh, but we saw that also that even though we had great schools, good schools, um, they could be better. There were, there were areas that, that are still lacking. There were, there were kids in other schools in the county that were lacking. And you're talking Winnet County schools, you're talking 180,500 students, 145 schools, and a $2.3 billion budget. I mean, that's a large entity. Yeah. Um, and um, the administration, the superintendent has been around for a long time, and his 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 He's done a good job, but um, again, uh, there are areas that we have to look at that need to be improved. Um, and also, the the board members had been around for a while. And I felt it was important that having the background that I did, um, being having a diversity of idea, being an, a diverse individual, I felt stepping up to the table was very important because you wanted people in the county, because Gwinnett also, the makeup of Gwinnett, if anyone comes to Georgia and you go to Gwinnett, yeah. um, we have a very diverse county. You're talking, um, I think the number was like 167 countries across the world oh, wow. and of, of people from that different races, different cultures, different religions. Um, it's such a melting pot that it was important to have representation on that board, not just from the perspective of a, a racial makeup or gender makeup, but also um, having some kind of cultural aspects and, and also some, uh, some uh, professional ideas that would take us to the next, to the next level. Yeah. Hmm. What are some of the things um, that you feel that uh, if you win the election, given that opportunity, you will be able to implement that will start having like immediate impact on the life of uh, uh, attending uh, the, the school district? Well, you know, again, the biggest thing I say, diversity of ideas is important. Um, 
helping people understand another perspective. So uh, I would like to bring a perspective, one, to see how do we manage our budget. Uh, one of the things that we do have in the organization is, is there is a huge deficit. And um, I'm sure there's been some accountability, but at the same time, we just need to be consistent on how we address that. But fast forward to what's happening today with COVID-19. Yes. I think the biggest thing, because my kids, just like all kids across the world, uh, did classes from home. And look into the future, we have to think about what education sh will look like. And it's not what it has, what it did look like three mo two months ago, right? So ha with my expertise, I think one of the areas I'd like to enhance and add is the area of digital learning. Okay. We have uh, professionals in the, in the school organization. And I, I will say across the country, my county was one of those that did very well in terms of having the, an infrastructure in place. So the ramp up, even though it was an emergency, um, the reaction and the teachers, the administration was just right on the money. Yeah. It came in and did the things it was supposed to do. But the looking at the whole situation down the line, there were, there were some gaps, you know. Um, I will commend all, the, all those teachers and um, administration were involved. But the reality, there were some gaps. And now we have the opportunity to address those gaps. We need to look at not just the academic well-being and making sure our teachers are delivering the coursework in a consistent uh, manner and using the same delivery met uh, method and more or less coming up with a strong digital curriculum. So when something like this happens, you have a curriculum that will have that seamless transition. And then making sure all our kids have the devices and tools they need to connect online. I mean, that's is a huge cost, but we need to make the investment now because the cost can be even more detrimental in the future. So those, those are some of the things that I see. The, the other thing that was missing that I think a lot of kids experienced throughout the, throughout the world was the social well-being. Um, how do they interact with their friends? Um, one child uh, I spoke to a few, a few weeks ago, no, actually a few days ago, I had uh, 12 kids. I did a Zoom call with them and wanted to get their feedback uh, after school was over to see how they did, what challenges they had. And one kid said, look, I mean, I, I stuck to my studies. I did very well. But what I really missed was connecting with my friends, connecting with other students. Yes. Um, I was a member of several clubs, and I couldn't do that. Well, there was no outlet within the digital space that was created uh, for our kids. So the digital learning doesn't have to just look at the um, academic aspect, but it also has to look at the social aspect to making sure that the kids um, were able to still interact, were still able to participate in certain activities that they love to do. So those are some of the things that have to be addressed. Absolutely. I think like me, like in, in my community, I remember like going to the school and my daughter said to me one day, like, oh, you know, they didn't even have any like um, uh, black teachers at the school. And it's make most, most of the kids, they're very mixed, like blacks, you know, Indians and, you know, Japanese, et cetera, whatever the case is. Yeah. It, it meant something to them. So I think even something as simple as that, people that they can really relate to. And, um, and uh, a question that I have for you also is that does the district board would have opportunity to be involved in terms of what types of curriculum that they're actually teaching, meaning like curriculum that will also like teach them about their culture, about that diversity. I think a lot of when Africans migrated to the United States, most people that I talk to, they always say about oh, when they came to school, people were calling their names, booty scratches, this and that. That's because of what they've learned from their friends from school. They didn't teach them, you know, like, are you going to be involved to that extent in terms of, listen, let's educate our children here so that they can have a better connection with other children that are coming from Africa or coming from Japan so that they understand, where, you know, the different cultures. So. Yeah, so what, what's good about Gwinnett is um, the whole community is involved or has the opportunity to be involved um, where the board since we try to set policy and set the right environment um, so that 
um, we can address some of the, the key issues as it relates to the growth of, of, of Gwinnett schools um, and addressing some of the concerns. Um, they do have an uh, uh, English uh, ESL program where kids who come from uh, homes that they speak other languages. Yes. Um, so they, we, we do have that. But like you said, uh, overall, from a curriculum standpoint, um, there, is a, a, there are committees that parents can also get involved in the community. So even though as a board member, we, we set policies and opportunities, yes. but setting the curriculum for the schools is a job not just for, it's not primarily just the board, but it's, it's the community as a whole. And, um, um, you know, parents can volunteer and participate. Uh, also business owners or professionals can participate on that committee when, when they do review the curriculum. So yes, there are opportunities for, for everyone in the community to get involved. Um, and then from a board perspective, we, have, we help um, address some of the policies or concerns that uh, people have as a whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Coins, uh, the Nelson was saying, teaches how to integrate it when they learn about their, their student. Absolutely. Oh, definitely. Yeah. definitely. Okay, great. So. Um, when is the, um, I, I believe the election you know, already started, that early voting, et cetera. Can you give us some details? How can we as a community um, and, and support you even more? What can we share? Where can we get details, et cetera? We can provide some information. So, so um, um, you can go to my website, shagunforschools.com, S-E-G-U-N for schools.com. -E schools and then uh, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, I'm, I'm more into Facebook. <laughs> I'm more of a Facebook person, but I also have a, a other social media. I use those platforms to find out what's going on with the campaign and uh, what, what, where I stand as far as my platform is concerned. Um, what I tell people right now, uh, you all have someone in the community or friends or family that might know, um, but might live in Gwinnett County. Uh, I'm in District 1. District 1 covers... Uh, uh, Dakula, Grayson, parts of Loganville, parts of Snellville, parts of Laurenville. Those are all cities within uh, Gwinnett County. Um, Gwinnett is broken up into five districts, and I'm running for uh, the seat in District 1. So if you have friends and family out there, give them my website so they can see my platform. Um, they can contact me if they have questions, if they want to know um, how they can be of assistance. They can volunteer. Um, St. Bishop. <laughs> Bishop is Bishop's through. I can. Yeah. So um, you can support me by donating uh, through my website because um, it takes it takes everyone. And I'll, I'll tell you, I've been so overwhelmed with this election where I've gotten so much support from our community, uh, not just here in, in, in Gwinnett, but also Georgia as a whole and outside of Georgia, uh, friends, friends and family all over uh, who know who I am and know the kind of person I am. I am, and even some of my colleagues from work. Um, so, so they've contributed to my campaign. Uh, they believe in the values that I have, and they know the contribution I can make uh, to the school system, bringing uh, diverse ideas. My last question for you, and then I'm going to wrap it up with a quiz. My quiz is like, why heck, jam questions. So. <laughs> um, how important is it, right, for Africans in the diaspora to be involved in, in politics out here, run for office, etc., and hold positions? Oh, it's very important. And one thing I didn't mention, uh, I'm a member of an organization called the Nigerian American Public Affairs Committee, which I was uh, uh, national president for three years. And that platform goes to edu educate Nigerian Americans to get involved in their communities. Hmm. Even if you don't run for office, but you can also participate in policy or decision-making process in your communities. And I think it's important because we live here, right? A lot of us are going back home and our kids live here. Our kids are from, you know, born and being raised here. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to decision-making, we need to be at the table. Um, we can't be part of the menu. We need to be part of those who make the de decision on what's going to be on the menu. And that's why I'm getting involved and running for a school board as a school board member in Gwinnett County, because I want to be involved in my community 
and part of that process of decision making. And and that's everyone needs to do that. All of us need to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And when we do that, I think our community becomes uh, a better place. Our community tends to be more open to other cultures and diversity. Um, you know, it's it's what we should be doing. Absolutely. Yeah, shout out to Bisha. You put the details up there also for folks to join. Yes. yes. All right, cool, bro. Thank you so much. You know, um, shout out to Bishop. You know, he's a leader in our community also. Uh, I think you know throughout all of this, the um, you know, you know, I'm a big fan of yours. I always bother you sometimes on text. We talk, and it's like to just have people in our community that we can look up to, people that are doing great things. I think it's so important because as you know yourself. Uh, there are some minor, 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 very minor individuals that give the Africans, give the Nigerians bad names in the diaspora at times. So uh, it's, it's so important to have people like yourself, you know, in the community, us that are doing the event, being positive to keep shining the light on, let people know, no, this is not all what we do. We are involved, we're doing this. And, you know, so thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, see platform. Uh, your, you know, teaching platform throughout the schools, this platform, your, this new venture right now, I'm excited about it. And uh, I think it's okay. one, one, one more thing I also want to point out. Um, we're actually going to make history in Georgia. Uh, there is uh, another Nigerian who I've worked with over the years, another platform, Gabe Okoye. He's running for uh, state senate. And it'll be huge to have two, two Nigerian-Americans. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, in government. And then across the country, um, there's a, a Nigerian, Igodaro, running for, in Florida, uh, Nike, um, who's running for judge. I can't think of her last name right now. There's a, a Nigerian, uh, Yinka. Um, well, I'm forgetting these guys' names, but he's, he's running in Missouri for Secretary of State, Yinka Faleti. Um, in California, Paul Akijo is running. Uh, so, Nigerians are running all over, I mean, and we're stepping up to the plate. So um, I want us to recognize that there, there are many young Nigerians who, uh, in fact, there was one young Nigerian lady that was elected in Bowie, Maryland, um, Roxy. She, she was just recently elected to city council. So it shows that we want to be involved. So um, thank you for having me. I, I really uh, appreciate and have been following your platform for a long time, and uh, I'm glad to be a guest. Yes, thank you, thank you. So now let let's do the uh, quiz. It's just uh, just pick one. <laughs> well, don't no, just pick one. So for you, right. uh, religion or spirituality? What would religion. You say? Religion. Okay. Uh, lunch meeting or dinner meeting? Dinner meeting. <laughs> Shegun or Ade? You know. <laughs> Shegun. <laughs> All right, uh, University of Lagos or Lawrence Technology University? Ooh, tough one. Uh, University of Lagos, my homeboy. So. All right, Martin Luther King or Malcolm X? Well, that's uh, an easy one, Martin Luther King. <laughs> I, I've been Martin Luther King land, so it's automatic. Exactly. <laughs> the governor or the mayor? What would you, if you can? Oh, the governor, straight governor. All right, Jollof Rice or Panayam? Ah, Pondi Jam, yo. <laughs> Egusi or Okro? Egusi. Ah, standard. Okay, for entrepreneurs, what would you advise them? Move to America or stay in Africa, build, develop, and create? Well, it's stay in Africa, build, develop, and create. It's a wrap. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Have fun doing this. Uh, good luck with the election. Of course, uh, we're going to be supporting. I think even those of us that don't live in Georgia, we have friends, we have families that yes. live in different counties. So all of us can, you know, put the information out there. So really appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. Thanks a lot. All right, no problem. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that was dope! Uh, shout out, shout out to Shagun for tuning in. Shout out to uh, to, uh, to Bishop and everybody else that tuned in. Let us go out there. Shout out to our sister, uh, Kofo. Thank you so much. Um, the whole family, everybody that joined us. We have to support one another. Let us support our brother. Uh, he's been doing great, great, big things in the community for a very long time. 
and we have to continue to so, uh, to support so that he can you know make us even more proud make things bigger and then do things for our children that are in this county in Guinea county so go to look him up Chef Marina on facebook a on instagram uh google he has got the website going let let us offer our support you can donate money five dollars ten dollars two dollars every little bit count let us donate um less of our support so thank you to everyone uh for tuning in today uh shout out to um you know to the people that gave me the t-shirt you know check them out on instagram also uh you know the dashiki diaries uh, shout out to them it's africa africa all the way africa for africans we have to support one another um you know yeah man shout out shout out to my dj man on board, you know, <laughs> DJ Biran, you know, shout out to Biran on board, shout out to everybody, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Ladi, uh, uh, Lilo, thank you so much, I appreciate it, thank you. Yes, yes, absolutely. Daddy and mommy, great, great job, success, yeah, shout out to Kola, thank you, man, your daddy's a legend, thank you, everybody. <laughs>